One of the recent issues we have had to deal with as one of the first generations to grow up on YouTube is seeing our online childhood idols fall so far. Whether it's the slow destruction of their own lives like Skyder's Minecraft, or an immediate action that completely takes viewers by surprise like the story of Jinbop, seeing those icons whom we associate with nostalgia to have such a grand downfall can often be hard to watch. Popular MMOs, known in real life as Patrick, was once one of those internet icons, making hundreds of Minecraft videos with his wife Jen to an audience of over 17 million subscribers. His various online videos reviewing and playing modded Minecraft have garnered billions of hits, and his content is often credited with bringing up the kids who watched him. But his life since then has just made him go further and further into a spiraling pit of despair. Whilst Pat hasn't been exposed for anything close to the crimes of other Minecraft YouTubers, the ongoing decay of his own life and mental health has been a concerning journey that raises questions about Pat's possible abusive actions as well as his personal struggles in the public eye. So today, myself and Turkey Tom are going to take a look at this fallen titan of the Minecraft community and tell you how popular MMOs ruined his life. Patrick Thomas Julianel was born on the 25th of November 1988 in Connecticut. Though he's known typically for being outspoken and loud in his online videos, back during childhood he was a very different person, as he hated taking pictures of himself and was kind of a quiet kid. Throughout middle school and high school, he became more social, taking an interest in going to the gym and lifting weights. Within a couple of years, Pat had put on 70 pounds of muscle, and later left college having earned an undergraduate degree in psychology. Around the same time, Pat really started getting into online video games. He'd always had an interest in them, but this was when he got really invested into playing massively multiplayer online RPGs. Particularly, he would sink hundreds of hours into RuneScape and World of Warcraft, and this would be later reflected in his online career, as the YouTube profile picture and Minecraft skin that he's known for is based on the Lich King, a well-known World of Warcraft boss. The popular MMOs channel began on April 17th, 2012, with Pat uploading his first video around a month later, playing RuneScape. And whilst you might have thought this is a let's play, it's actually the first part of a review of the game. Pat would start playing and reviewing other MMOs in his channel such as Atlantica, Terra and Rift, but he quickly got into a much more different game, a sandbox game by the name of Minecraft that had been fairly popular online. Pat soon started doing Minecraft let's plays, hoping to emulate the success of people like Skyder's Minecraft, though his channel growth was sluggish and unsuccessful. But he also quickly introduced another person to his channel. Hey what's up guys, it is Pat and... Welcome to our Skyblock series. So today I have with me my girlfriend Jen. Hey guys. And what we're going to be doing is a bunch of different challenges in Skyblock. Jen, real name Jennifer Flagg, was also born in Connecticut in 1990. Jen and Pat went to the same high school together but didn't meet each other until they both volunteered at a local animal shelter. They soon became friends and their friendship grew fast as they also lived close to each other, eventually resulting in them dating after a couple of years. In the coming months, Pat would shake things up by introducing his now iconic Minecraft mod reviews to his channel. Although individuals such as Sky Does Minecraft had began this trend, Sky himself had left it behind to focus more on Minecraft videos with his friends, leaving an audience vacuum. Pat would be quick and smart to take advantage of this and started uploading mod reviews on on mass, drawing experience from his days of reviewing World of Warcraft. By the end of 2013, he had grown the channel to almost 300,000 subscribers. Pat and Jen started making videos together with loads of more creative series, from Lucky Block challenge videos to mod showcases, storyline Minecraft series, reaction videos and vlogs. Their dynamic on videos started to really form and his introduction was a phenomenal formula. By July 2014, Pat's channel had hit a million subscribers. A year later, that number had grown to 5 million. By the end of 2016, popular MMOs had reached the milestone of 10 million subscribers and was getting around 250 million views per month, becoming one of the most viewed content creators on YouTube. Pat and Jen had mastered the YouTube algorithm, and through their insanely meteoric rise to stardom, they had gained a huge and loyal audience along the way. Their vlogs showing a window into their lives had only gotten their audience closer to the couple. During 2014, Pat and Jen would get engaged, moving from Connecticut to Jacksonville, Florida. The following year, they would get married. But over the horizon, issues were already coming up. In building his channel, Pat had banked it on the fairy tale assumption that him and Jen would be together forever. Unfortunately, that would not turn out to be the case. 
By 2019, the popular MMO's channel had grown to 15 million subscribers. Although the growth on their channel had slowed down, Pat and Jen were still consistently getting millions of views. However, you'd be forgiven for thinking that it was a paradise, as relationship issues had begun behind the scenes, and it turned out exactly as you would expect. On May 25th, 2019, Pat and Jen uploaded a video titled, We Are Breaking Up, where they announced that they were separating. What's up dudes, it's Pat and welcome back to another video. Hey guys. So we're making a video today that we've been dreading making for actually a really long time very, now. Very, long time. To the point where it's hard to look serious in it because we put it off for so long. <laughs> um, this video is like a lot of people have done videos like this yes. obviously and usually they're like crying and stuff but we did we're all past that now we, we're past that stage we didn't want to make the video when we were all emotional so yes. we've actually waited um months months <laughs> by the time of recording this video pat and jen hadn't been living with each other but still planned to record together for their channel one of the reasons why they decided to make such a big decision came down to their differing perspectives on whether they wanted kids. Pat didn't want them, whilst Jen did. They state that they didn't want to hold each other back as it could have possibly soured the relationship over time, and in a later podcast, Pat adds more information on his decision, saying that he felt too young to raise a child. Despite preaching openness and honesty in their video, this decision was met with a lot of sadness and some discontent from the channel's fans. Most were heartbroken to see the breakup of a seemingly perfect couple who they'd grown up with, whilst others held hatred against both of them. With Jen leaving, Pat struggled to go back to a normal life. His anxiety hit him hard as he wasn't used to life alone, but eventually he would go back to making Minecraft videos after a few months. This time, he came back with a new girlfriend named Eleni who he had met over Tinder, and at face value, she seemed pretty nice and sweet. Pat's issue is that in making his YouTube empire, he had centered it around someone he could not assure would always be there. And his second mistake was that as soon as Jen was gone, Pat was trying to immediately replace her. He tried to make it seem like nothing had changed, but the fans were pretty annoyed by this and many of them left, unhappy. For the audience that remained, Eleni would become a more hated figure to them because it just wouldn't be the same as Jen. Videos of Eleni and Pat playing together would get considerable dislike ratios, and this all came to a head in a video with Eleni and Jen versus Pat in Minecraft. And the amount of awkward tension in the recording was palpable, probably because recording with your ex-wife and your current partner is not a good idea. On other occasions, Pat had to tell his audience to stop comparing Eleni to Jen and respect her because she was a nice person. He would go out of his way to make videos and even got Jen on a video to send a message out of reassurance, but the hordes of kids in Pat's audience wouldn't stop. The channel's views per month tanked from 90 million in May 2020 to 20 million only four months later. And while that's still a phenomenal amount of views that most YouTubers would take in a heartbeat, it's a huge decrease in comparison. Keep in mind, we're also talking about a channel that at the time had 17 million subscribers. Eventually, all of this took its toll on Pat, who would slowly start to abandon his main channel. He and Eleni would also start having personal troubles and eventually ended their relationship altogether. This should be where the story ends. But unfortunately for Pat, his breakup wouldn't wind up nearly as private as it should have been. As far as we know, Pat and Eleni's breakup was initially amicable, and Pat had begun dating another girl by the name of Liz, but Eleni still held some sort of malice towards Pat, and in September of 2020, she would begin publicly trash-talking him to her Instagram. She called him an old, awkward, divorced man, accusing him of shit-talking and bashing her, and she repeatedly denied that they were ever dating in the first place. And considering that they had been together in videos and seemed pretty much like they were in a relationship, this puzzled many who came across it. But it was only a few, this wasn't really ballooning to the point where Pat had to address it. Yet everyone was taken aback when Pat published a 38 minute response video the same month titled The Truth About Eleni. Inside this video, Pat heavily focuses on Eleni's claims that they weren't dating, showing a lot of evidence to prove that they really were in a relationship. Here's pictures, so any doubts you may have will absolutely go out the window in one second. Because we did um, have our Valentines together. Happy Valentine's Day. This really... I, I mean, I can't read cursive. I've really enjoyed spending time with you and getting to know you these past few months. Glad we are each other's Valentine's this year. Yours, Eleni. This is a really weird picture um, from what we baked cakes together for 100 days on Snapchat. And New York City, that was Christmas time. Valentine's Day, that was in LA. Um, this was in Kerala when we went to go see Lucas um, at his house. So Valentine's Day card that I had my artist make for her. This is a picture that was on our Instagram before she deleted all of her pictures. Well, I took, in the last year, I took like at least like half the pictures on our Instagram. And here's another one that was from my phone. 
at the same restaurant so clearly i was there and there's just a lot of pictures in general from hawaii because we went on trips us horseback riding um all kinds of things really when she was living at my house and there's a little cloud i can't believe we matched on tinder about a year ago and now we're celebrating six months together happy six months We've had a lot of adventures together, and I'm glad we are here. When confronted on some of these pictures via message, Eleni would deny that it was her in those pictures. Pat would also show public Instagram comments where she confirmed that she broke up with him, saying that he was just not the person I thought he was, and that her eyes had been open to his true colours. Even worse for her is one of these messages where she openly states she would create an embellished story on Pat because she knew he would also embellish parts of the story, which is definitely shooting herself in the foot there, Eleni. Pat also shows DMs where Eleni is targeting Pat's girlfriend Liz, calling her a gold digging home wrecking whore. And according to Pat, Eleni had been plotting to review bomb her eyelash extension business. The reason these DMs are from him is because he apparently no longer has the original screenshot, but sent exactly what she said to someone else. Definitely one of the most suspicious claim scenes so far, but regardless of that, this video would get widespread support. Having been put on the spot, Eleni responded by accusing Pat of being a liar and a manipulator, and further stressed that Pat was cheating on her with several other girls. You'd think Pat wouldn't need to make another video because he'd already proven her as an unreliable narrator and a liar, but instead he came back for round two. He would make another response getting testimony from the girls involved, and then pulled a reverse card, saying that Eleni was actually the cheater and had been emotionally abusive to him, constantly patrolling over the people he messaged. Then, without even a response, Pat Pat swung in with video 3, questioning whether Eleni was a gold digger, and by the time Pat had made video 4, which was just a Q&A about his breakup drama, it was basically dead in the water. Except not really, because his fanbase, which despised Eleni, had made memes out of her leaked messages and made it into a running gag, which he then played into on his second channel. The Eleni situation would turn out to be a near total victory for Pat, firstly because he had a bigger fanbase, but secondly because he could actually show proof, unlike the incompetent and often baseless claims made by Eleni. However, However, I'm of the opinion that it went possibly too far and almost like he was milking the situation. To be clear, Eleni did lie a lot, obviously, but her claims weren't even particularly serious at first, they also weren't getting any traction, and keep in mind that she wasn't even a public figure a year ago. Yet here was Pat making videos, going overkill, leaking DMs, and exposing his private life to his audience of kids. The question had to be asked, did he really need to get involved in the first place? You could say this was him swiftly dealing with his first real controversy, but as you'll find out, this was far from the end. At the beginning of the last segment, we briefly mentioned that Pat had started dating a new girl by the name of Liz. In fact, Eleni had leaked her name to the public whilst going after Pat in late 2020. Things were kept private for a few months by Pat until she was introduced to the public on the 7th of May 2021, and for her first few videos, she seemed like a pretty good person. Even the popular MMOs fans liked her, showing to Pat that you don't need to immediately replace someone to please people. However, another thing about Liz is that she'd also been diagnosed with several mental illnesses, including PTSD, depression, and borderline personality disorder or bipolar disorder. We don't really know whether it's BPD or bipolar because Pat says them interchangeably in the future, and although you'd think an undergrad in psychology would handle a mentally ill partner better than most, unfortunately that didn't turn out to be the case. On the 19th of May 2021, days after their relationship had become public, news came out via an article from Heavy.com showing that Pat and Liz had both been arrested. The police were called in the early hours a few days prior, with them first talking to Pat as they stood outside his house. He said that they had both been drinking and got into an argument. Liz then supposedly assaulted him, got into her car, and drove off. Pat added that she often does this because of her mental illnesses, but he never called the police. Liz's statement, on the other hand, is much more censored in the police report, but from what we can gather, her side was that Pat assaulted her. She also later showed patient discharge papers showing that she had been booked in with a concussion. Due to the opposing stories and no witnesses, both Pat and Liz were placed under arrest for domestic battery with a bond of $2,500 each. They were both released on bond, and the charges were dropped soon afterwards. The publication of this case in Pat's mugshot really shocked a lot of people online many of which were former fans disappointed in what had happened. A lot of them immediately believed Liz's side, despite the fact that you couldn't even read most of her statement. And this had caused some people to start posting tweets such as, Pat abuses women. Usually, this wouldn't be worth mentioning, but shockingly, there was one person who liked one of those replies. That person was Jen. When this was noticed, Jen's likes gained a lot of traction and attention, although she would move swiftly to respond. She said, I do not use Twitter regularly, and when I was messaged about all this drama, I went on to see what was being said. By accident, I liked a tweet that's now being seen in a poor manner. Pat never, in the 10 years we were together, laid a hand on me. 
Novelty Dolls replies, Unfairly portrayed? I mean, Pat did still get arrested for domestic abuse, right? That's not very unfair portrayal. And Jen says, There are two sides to every story. All I can say is that from my experience, he is not the violent and abusive person that he's being made out to be. With all this going viral, Eleni took the opportunity to sprinkle some salt into the open wounds. And by that, I mean she leaked his address and showed text messages where Pat was talking about Jen, saying that she was lazy and never cooked. Pat would respond to this by saying, Don't believe everything you hear. I will need to address the false accusations soon. And Eleni, thanks for leaking my address and harassing me and Liz when she told you to stop posting about her and you refused. He then said, Oops, here's yours, and posted Eleni's address underneath but he quickly took that tweet down and put up a replacement. Eleni would hit back showing DMs where Pat was pleading with her to make peace with each other, and then added more by setting Pat's mugshot as her YouTube profile picture. This would prompt Pat to respond with vague legal threats of slander and defamation of character, which seemingly was enough to mark the official end of this situation. Five days after the arrest, Pat and Liz posted a video, and it seemed as if all the troubles were behind everyone. This is despite the fact that Pat was alleging consistent abuse in the police report that he kept hidden, whilst Liz said she had been assaulted but apparently that was water under the bridge. Everything was fine and peaceful, and they mostly continued posting videos with each other well into the new year. Around New Year's 2022, pictures would be posted to Instagram showing Pat apparently hanging out with some strippers during his holiday. He was pictured getting drinks with them, letting them pose on his car, and bringing them over to his house for parties. Questions asked about where Liz was during this time remain unanswered, leading many to believe that Pat was cheating on her or had broken up with her temporarily or something like that. Furthermore, from the pictures, it was clear that drinking and partying had taken his physical toll on Pat. Gone was the admirable and inspirational weightlifting that defined his life, now replaced with a slightly more disheveled and lost individual. Pictures like this really typified Matt as the old, awkward, divorced man that Eleni said he was. Some thought this was the hardest fall he had ever sunk to, but unfortunately, it seems he went a little further. Pat's worst incident yet began in March, with a simple unfollow of Liz on Instagram. Whilst this seems innocuous and almost absurd to point out, it coincides with one of Eleni's most concerning posts, as she would reply under Pat's Facebook relationship update. The post was a short video of her car, showing a smashed windshield and slashed tyres. Above, Liz added the caption, Best Boyfriend Award. And despite that, the two of them were back together again only a few weeks later. Pat and Liz's relationship had turned into a constant cycle of abuse and falling out and destruction, and this car footage turned out to be a foreboding clip of what was to happen. Two months later, Pat and Liz were arrested yet again, yet unlike last time, the details here were far more serious. Supposedly Liz and Pat had gone to a club for drinks and games, Pat had gotten a bit too drunk, and Liz wanted to go home. Liz said that Pat started punching her on her right arm while she was driving them home, although it's worth noting the police report mentions that they did not notice any injuries on her arm. Then Liz stated that the two supposedly had a heated argument whilst driving back home. Pat fell asleep outside due to how drunk he was, and she got inside and locked all the doors out of fear he would harm her. When Pat awoke an hour later, he was allegedly standing outside of the house with a knife. He then apparently slashed the tires on their car and then pleaded to be let back inside, turning into him yelling and holding the knife to his arm. Liz said she came out of the house a while later when she believed that Pat had calmed down, but instead he started to chase after her with the knife in hand, screaming obscenities. She then stated that she ran around the outside of the residence before running down the street to the neighborhood, screaming for help. At one point, Pat caught up with Liz and then apparently stepped on the back of the heel, before she ran away again and managed to find a security guard so she could call the police. The police report also stated that there was a cut on her left heel that was still bleeding when they arrived. After the police came to Liz, they then got in contact with Pat, who said that he never touched Liz. According to him, they had gotten into an argument at the club, and then they returned home. When they got home, Pat says that Liz started striking, hitting, and throwing things at his face, although the police report says there were no visible injuries. Pat then said he was locked out of the residence, so for no reason he decided to slash the tires to their cars. Importantly, Pat says he never tried to chase after or threaten Liz. The police finally questioned the security guard, who said that she saw Pat chasing Liz down the street. While she didn't see Pat with a knife, she did say that Pat was actively chasing her down, appeared threatening, and Liz was in distress. Following this, Pat was arrested for assault, aggravated, with a deadly weapon without intent to kill, domestic. His bond was set at $25,000, and he was placed under house arrest, but Pat was able to pay the bond, and the charges were later dropped or abandoned as far as I can tell. However, the story would not end there, as a few months later, Liz would post a TikTok video in which she detailed her entire relationship with Pat as abusive. She starts off by showing pictures of how they 
they met, before then showing a bruise from Pat allegedly using a belt on her. She also accuses Pat of abusing his pet Cloud, not disclosing his sexual health history to her, giving her a concussion during the altercation that led to their first arrest, getting her pregnant when she didn't want to, threatening to spike her drinks if she didn't have an abortion, and treating her badly until she finally left him. Liz would also later post two recordings, one of them where Pat is drunk on the back of a car, and another where Pat is arguing with her. With everything here being stacked up, it's safe to say it does not look good for Pat. Mostly because of the fact that Pat said he didn't chase Liz, but the security guard, a third party witness, said he did. Even the police themselves concluded that Pat was most likely guilty, hence why they arrested him, and if we're to believe the allegations that Liz has posted, that really turns things around in an ugly way. But on the other hand, Liz's public posts are mostly testimony, and the proof she does show is inconsistent. One of them that really stands out is when she's talking about Pat not disclosing his sexual health history, and she's showing a box of fluconazole tablets that she found. For those unaware, fluconazole is used to treat fungal infections, especially thrush, but the box shown says it's used to treat yeast infections for women, and unless it's something we don't know about Pat, I'm pretty sure he can't use this medicine. Whilst this does not discredit everything Liz has said, it does put some of her credibility into question. And at the end of the day, this is a situation where we still fully don't know everything about who is in the right and what happened. All we definitely know is that Pat chased after Liz and appeared to be threatening in one incident. And despite the far more severe nature of this arrest compared to the previous one, this would not get nearly as much traction as them and stayed relatively under the radar. This could be due to the fact that Pat never directly addressed this incident, not even acknowledging its existence until a community post in October. October 2022. I want everyone to know I'm fine. I'm happily living with my girlfriend Liz. Things have been a bit crazy as seen over social media, but that is also part of things being blown out of proportion because of having a job over social media. I'd be lying if I said things have been perfect, but we are happy and I do have good friends in spite of what has been said over the news. I have to wait on talking about everything because of the corrupt legal system where I live, but I am fine. I live with Liz and Cloud and we are all okay. Life can be a bit crazy sometimes, and because of that, I need to wait to talk about everything. I just want to assure everyone that we are happy, and small things can easily get blown out of proportion with social media. Though this post was made as a reassurance, it wouldn't be long before he would see the inside of a jail cell yet again. In November 2022, Pat was again arrested, although this time not for anything nearly as dark as before. During an NFL game between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Las Vegas Raiders, Pat's friend Ethan jumped over a barrier and ran onto the field, shirtless, covered in Vaseline and holding a football. He was subsequently tackled by security, and he got Pat, Ethan, and another friend named Mike arrested. This was one of Pat's pranks that he'd actually done before at a basketball game for a main channel video, but the police weren't happy with it. The trio were all brought to court with charges of breach of peace and criminal conspiracy, and whilst Pat was sentenced to only two days in jail with credit for time served, his mugshot and the video of him apologizing in court would go viral. All right, Mr. Gionel, good luck. That was a stupid thing you guys did yesterday. <clears throat> Sorry. Following this incident, we wouldn't hear a lot from Pat. His last statement was seemingly hopeful and happy, much like before. I'm really considering coming back. I don't need money or anything. I really genuinely miss it all a lot. I started because I loved it and it would make me happy. It would probably be with my friends. It wouldn't be with Jen. She has her own life. Money-wise, I was smart compared to most YouTubers. I invested my money. I don't need anything from anyone, not even close. I just want to entertain people and have a good time, which will make a lot of people happy. We would only hear from him again five months later, and this time, his message was much more harrowing than before. Elizabeth, you've posted about me hurting you when I never hurt you. I went to jail twice, and there's been countless videos about me. 
And don't be hard on her, she has BPD, PTSD, and depression. My first arrest, she said I hurt her. We had a night out at the bars, we were drinking. She got upset whilst we were making love and started breaking things. And I tried to hold her down to stop her. I had bites and scratches all over my body. And they arrested me because she was so messed up, she was falling all over the ground and bleeding. They arrested her too. The second time she was arrested by herself for hurting me. The third time she was arrested again for drunk driving. The fourth time I was arrested because she was super drunk and trying to drive and I was also doing the wrong thing drinking. I popped the tires in both our cars and they gave me a felony charge saying I assaulted her with a deadly weapon. She was also arrested. And she's been arrested with everyone she's ever been with and been in and out of the mental hospital. And I can't lie, I've done and said not very good things. But after a year of a woman you love cheating on you, beating you, beating me while we were on vacation, and leaving me on the opposite side of the country because I shushed her while she woke up drunk, it changes you. If you have family in this situation, get them help. And I'm struggling so hard because she called me saying how she's been doing cocaine and other drugs and woke up in bed with another man. This is where I'm a problem. I've been so hurt I've drank a crazy amount, especially when she told me that. I drank so much I spent two days in the hospital last week and lost 15 pounds. I woke up shaking and laying on the floor crying, and all I got was a text from her calling me a liar. I'm on the brink of falling into a void which I cannot escape, and I need support. Just know I love Liz, and you don't need to say anything bad to her. Underneath that post, he added an additional comment saying, I'm just suffering so much. Please make sure she knows, if I don't make it through this, that I'll watch over her forever. For those who are unfamiliar with his older content, this was a shocking and depressing statement. To see their childhood YouTuber in such a place of weakness, to see Pat, a guy who never drank alcohol when he was with Jen and regularly kept in shape, be reduced to this husk of the man he used to be, for anyone who was a fan of him, this was chilling. Following this community post, a concerned individual would call the police, and they ended up showing up to Pat's parents' house. He would make another post clarifying that he was okay, before then going inactive on all social media. He stopped posting to his channel, his Twitter and Instagram were unheard from, and silence fell. He wouldn't post for another seven months. When he uploaded his video, I went to jail. The video was the first episode of a podcast made with his friend Mike, where they discussed their detailed story of running onto the football field and getting jailed. In this video, he does look better, but there was no mention of his April 2023 post or anything that happened there. Yet at the same time, Liz posted a TikTok showing her bruise marks, hospital discharge papers, and those two recordings of Pat, allegedly from the night that the assault happened. A month later, on October 29th, Pat would publish another podcast titled, Will Jen Be Coming Back? In it, he talks with Mike about what happened to Jen. Since Pat and Jen's separation, Jen had met another man and moved away, and later stopped making videos or appearing in Pat's videos. This was because in late 2022, she was expecting a child and had ceased online activity, pursuing a more private and peaceful life. It's insane to see years later that Jen and Pat were once so close together, but since they separated, their lives have become polar opposites. With Jen having a child with her partner in 2022, she got everything she wanted. Meanwhile, everything Pat had built, everything he was striving for, everything he thought he had, fell apart completely. Whether Pat is an abuser to Liz or not is still to be 100% proven, but if there's one thing that's certain, it's that the popular MMO's fanbase has been quick to ignore these concerning allegations or sweep them under the rug by simply proclaiming that their childhood idol could never do this. The reality that many don't want to accept is that something like that could definitely happen. And either way, Pat's world since his separation from Jen has been nothing short of a shit show. At the most charitable, his life has been torn apart by psychotic partners. And at the most critical, Pat is a destructive abuser to his girlfriend and he deserves his fate. Either way you look at it, you can agree it's just been an unfolding tragedy where no one wins. As of today, Pat continues to produce content on the popular MMO's channel, but it's evident that the channel has not reclaimed its former glory. YouTube is now a rapidly changing landscape. People grow up and trends change, and it's also clear that the challenges presented by his personal life continue to persist. Even if he's just doing this for enjoyment, you can see for yourself from the videos that the man we see today is somewhat broken. It's a far cry from the energetic YouTuber that millions of kids used to watch. Above all else, the career of popular MMOs should be taken as a cautionary tale, showing that when you're an online personality, one of the riskiest things you can ever do is put your relationship online as part of your work. When you do, everyone, and I mean everyone, will be able to see it. It might invoke a sense of attachment from your audience, but the sacrifice is that millions can watch on as your relationship reaches its happiest highs and its nastiest lows. Until next time, stay safe and stay toasty. Yeah, more like leave me alone.
victory. More like a gay victory for gay guys. <laughs>